Hello, I'm Ryan for Ooznest, and today we're going to go over using Universal Geco Sender with the Workbee CNC machine. We had quite a few requests to go over this program, so I thought I'd do a quick video and just run through the interface and what all the buttons do. So the first thing is to download and install Universal Geco Sender. So to do that, go to Google and search GitHub UGS, and then click on the top link. So once on here, you want to scroll down to the download section and then download the UGS Classic version and then click on that. We've already got installed this computer, so I'm going to close this folder and open Universal Geco Sender from my desktop. Now we've got Universal Geco Sender open, I'm just going to quickly go over the different panes. So it's separated into five panes. The top left pane, the connection settings. The one below that, the machine status settings. So this outputs the work position, the machine position, and the active state. Then we've got the file section. So this is where you send your G-code files to the machine. You've got the machine control section. So this is where you can um, reset your zero, home the machine, um, reset the axis, return to zeros. Now on the right hand side of this pane you've got your jog commands and then the bottom right hand pane is your console pane and then you've got the command section where you can send commands to the machine. So let's first connect to the machine. So I've got it plugged in via USB and then if I refresh this I can see that COM6 has come up which is the X Pro. So I select that, make sure the board rate is set to 115 200. The firmware on the CNC X Pro is GRBL, so make sure it's selected like that, and then press open. So once you press open, you can see in the bottom right hand pane it populates. So the first thing you should say is connected to COM6 at the board rate we selected, and then below that it gives the Gerbil version, so in this case 1.1, and then it brings up the Gerbil settings, and then the OK commands so we know we're correctly connected. So if you want to set the dollar dollar settings on the board you would type in dollar dollar in the command section and press enter. So this has brought up all the dollar dollar settings from 0 to 132. If you want to know what each of these settings do just go to your web browser type in GRBL settings and press enter into Google. Go to the top link, GRBL 1.1 configuration. And then on this page, it has a list of all the settings and what they do, and it has all detailed information about each setting. So back to Universal Geco Sender. If I want to set one of these settings, what you type in is dollar, and then the setting number you want to set. So for instance, I want to set $4 equals 0, so I type in $4 equals, and if I want to set it to 0, I type in 0, so $4 equals 0, press enter, type in $$ again, and we can check if it's been changed. So if I look up, I can see $4 is now set to 0. For the work we see in C machine, it needs to be set to 1, so I'm just going to change it back, so $4 equals 1, enter, now I type in dollar, 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 dollar again, I can see that it's now set to 1. You can also type in here G code commands, so for instance you could just type in G1, Z10, F500 and this will move the Z axis back and press enter and it will do that. I'm just going to come back to that later because currently the machine is set in an alarm state. So let's just go over just go this alarm state. So with the work we see in C machine, we have uh, end stops enabled and home enabled. So whenever you first turn the machine on and connect it to it, it will be in an alarm state. There's two ways to get rid of this alarm. Either you press the dollar $X and that will just remove the alarm, or you press the dollar $H and this will home the machine and also remove the alarm. So I'm going to press dollar $H now. So as you can see, the machine will first home the Z-axis. 
then it will simultaneously home the X axis and the Y axis and we'll move to this back right hand position. So I'm just going to leave that finish before I do anything else. So in Universal G-Code Sender, the machine position is now set to minus three, minus three, minus three. It, the reason it says minus three is because it's our bounce off setting in the GRBL firmware. So we now know the machine is correctly honed. So now let's just look at these top settings, the machine control. So the first one is reset zero. So you would use this when you want to set your work position. So you'd move your machine to wherever you want your work zero set. For instance, the front left corner in this case, you'd move it there, get in the right position and press reset zero. You can also reset each axis individually. So you can press reset X axis, reset Y and reset Z. Below that button with the return to zero button. So if a machine is somewhere other than your um, work zero, you can press the return to zero and that would return to the work zero position. The soft reset, this will soft reset the controller. In case you get any errors in that, you can press that button and it will do that. Under the soft reset button, you've got a dollar H button. So this homes the machine, like what I just did. Next to that, you have a dollar X button. So this just kills the alarm. And then onto the right hand side, we have the jog commands. So the first, is you can switch it between inches and millimeters. So at the moment, I've set to millimeters. With the X, Y step size, so you could put in here whatever value you want. For instance, I want to move with 100 mil. You have the Z step size, so you could put in here, for instance, one mil. And then you have the feed rate. This is how quick it does the um, steps above. If, for instance, the Z step size is grayed out. What you need to do is go over to the settings on the top left, send the settings, and then make sure the second one down, use separate step sizes for Z and XY drug movements, is ticked, and then press save and close, and this will allow you to set Z values in here. And then we have the jog buttons. So if I press the X negative one, it moves to the left, and then back again, X positive, Then you can press the jog, jog on the Y button and then jog the Z here. What you can also do, what I was talking about earlier, is put in manual commands here. So if I just jog this to the left using the jog button, just give it some room. And down here, I could for instance type a manual G code command. So G1 Z minus 10 F500. And this will move the z-axis down 10 mil. I press enter, and then you can see that does the same thing, just a manual operation. So what I'm gonna do is just rehome the machine using the dollar H button. Another thing this also has is enable keyboard movements. So if you have that ticked, you can then use the buttons on your keyboard to move the machine around. By buttons, I mean the arrow buttons on the bottom right hand side of your keyboard. Just one thing to be careful about is not to hold these buttons in, otherwise it will just um, use the command multiple, multiple times and this will add up and move the machine past your limits if you haven't got soft limits enabled. So I'll just press them one at a time or have the zero x y step size set to a small value and then you can, could hold it. So I'm just going to press the return to zero button and then if you see the machine it will return to our zero position in the front left corner. see that the work position is set to zero and active state is idle. Um, so if you want to send a file to the machine, you've got the file section down here. To load up the file, we press the browse button. 
This brings up the File Explorer. Navigate on your computer to the file you want to send to the machine. So I've navigated to this folder here. I've got a file here called quarterinch-cut.gcode. And I'm going to press the open button on that and just let that load in. So now that it's loaded in, it tells you how many rows in the file. The sent rows, so zero in this case, I haven't sent any of it yet. And the remaining rows. Once you start sending it, it will also give an estimated time remaining and total duration. If you want to visualise the file, you press this visualise button here. It just takes a second to load up. So this brings up this new window. And it shows all the toolpath lines. This yellow line is your um, where the machine is, and then we can move it around in 3D and just have a quick look that it's going to cut everything correctly. So, from what I can see, that um, looks correct. And it also gives the dimensions here. So, I'm just going to shut this. And then, what you do when you actually want to send it to the machine, you press the send button. I'm not going to send that just yet, I'm just going to quickly go over something else. So for instance, if you press the send button and it brings up an error called soft limits, basically what that means is that the machine is telling you that your file is going to make the machine hit itself somewhere. So what I'll do is go back to your CAM program and just recheck it to make sure it's staying within the machine limits. The common one is that CAM programs have a Z safe height. So basically when the machine is traversing, it will go to Z safe height, so mystery clamps. Usually this is set too high, there's not enough travel on the machine, and this will give that error. A second common error is unsupported command. So basically the controller has detected a command which it doesn't support. So to do this, to get away from this error, just press the OK button. And then this pause button here will change to resume, and you press that, and it will, the file will just carry on as normal. To stop that error coming up, what you want to do is go back to your CAM program and choose another post processor. In the Vectric range of programs, we use the GRBL.gcode millimeter post processor. When you um, send the file, the console pane will output what's getting sent to the machine. So you can just, if you're interested, see all the commands that are getting sent. So, what I'm going to do now. You start the machine up and press the send button. So, I've given a good overview of Universal GCO Sender. If there's anything you think I've missed or you want a bit more information on the specific part, leave a comment and we'll get back to you. I hope you found this video informative. Please subscribe to our channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.